Ukraine's military says it has retaken a key city on the southeastern front of the fighting. Progress in its counteroffensive has been gradual and in amid entrenched Russian positions. Reuters reports Ukrainian forces now are on a path toward another key city in the hopes of reaching the Sea of Azov. If they're successful, it would split Russia's military forces in two within the country and signal a shift in the dynamics of the war. Meanwhile, new video released by a Russian state-controlled broadcaster shows, for the first time, detained American Paul Whelan in prison. This is an undated video captured at Whelan's prison labor camp, shows him working, eating, interacting with other prisoners. Whelan repeatedly heard telling the crew filming him that he cannot answer their questions or conduct interviews. Again, that's Russian state video. Joining us now, Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. He's a member of the Foreign Relations and Judiciary Committees and chairs the Ethics Committee. Senator Coons also serves as national co-chair for President Biden's re-election campaign. Senator, good morning. It's good to have you back on the show. That video of Paul Whelan, again, the context is that is state video, propaganda video of some kind from the Russian government. But at least we see him. We don't know when it's from. What is your sense of where the negotiation is to get him home? Well, these are hard negotiations, and the Biden administration is determined uh, to work tirelessly to bring home every American who's unjustly detained overseas. Uh, Paul Whelan certainly is near the top of that list of many Americans who are being held in countries around the world. Uh, one thing we are doing in Congress, I have introduced a bipartisan bill that's in both the House and Senate that would make sure that when Americans return from captivity, uh, they don't face uh, unjust fines and fees from the IRS for a failure to pay their taxes while they were imprisoned. That actually happened uh, to Washington Post journalist Jason Rezaian, who, uh, when he returned after more than a year in Iranian prison, um, faced tens of thousands of dollars of IRS fines and fees. Uh, it seems unimaginable that that's the actual practice, uh, and it requires a change to law for us to make sure that hostages um, who are returned don't face that. Uh, we also have a bipartisan bill to create a national day and flag remembering those Americans being uh, held overseas unjustly that has passed the Senate and we hope will pass the House later this year. Senator Coons, good morning. John Lemire, that certainly seems like common sense legislation to not make people who were imprisoned overseas have to come back and pay uh, and face fines for unpaid uh, taxes. But wanted to talk to you about where things stand with Ukraine's counteroffenses, as, as Willie just noted. Some slow progress, but progress all the same. Uh, but the clock uh, is ticking in this fighting season with both muddy season and then a harsh winter on the horizon. Where do you think things stand, particularly now in the moment of Evgeny Prigozhin's death and Putin only tightening his grip on power? Look, Prigozhin was killed because Putin makes sure that he exacts retribution against anyone who challenges him. There are a number of senior Russian military officials uh, who have been taken into custody or disappeared. And I'll remind you, this is just part of a long string of Putin's opponents, uh, domestic and foreign, who've been assassinated, uh, who have found their way out of seven-story windows or who've uh, consumed tea that was laced uh, with radioactive materials or who were uh, injected with poison and died. Uh, he has retained his control over Russia for 20 years by brutally suppressing internal dissent. And Prigozhin's effort roughly two months ago to march on Moscow, I'll remind you, was partly uh, caused by the strength of Ukraine's opposition to Russia's invasion. Prigozhin was very critical of Russian military leaders uh, for their failures on the battlefield. And I'll remind you that only Wagner was able to make progress in the last year. They took the town of Bakhmut at an awesome price, a, a horrible cost of 20,000 dead. Uh, and without him and without his leadership, um, I wonder whether there will be any progress by Russian forces. At the same time, Ukrainians continue to fight fiercely. They've shown great heart and determination. Uh, and with new training, new equipment, and sustained resources from the West, I am optimistic that their counteroffensive will pick up steam uh, this month and later in this year.